My name's Carol Moorhead, and I am a volunteer with Disuse Land Trust. I've been volunteering with them for about six years or so, and I primarily lead wildflower hikes. So my background in wildflowers is really just a love of wildflowers that started uh, back when I took an alpine biology class in um, college. And since then, I've just continued to try to learn more, and I love sharing flowers with other people. So welcome. I find that the best wildflowers are on this kind of middle trail. So we're going to go from here and uh, go out and take a right. And we'll stay along here where we're above the creek. And... Um, but out in the open, that's what the wildflowers love, is the sunshine. So this is balsam root, balsamoriza sagittata, and it is fairly common here in uh, the high desert setting. The Latin names often have a reason, and sagittata means like spear-shaped, and if you look at the leaf, it's kind of spear-shaped, or uh, some people say more heart-shaped, but, but to me it's, it's more pointed than a heart. Um, these plants, in the early stages, in the spring, the Native Americans would uh, eat some of the shoots and dig up the roots and um, consume those as well. And then later in the season they might collect the seeds. They have some black oily seeds and uh, use those as a food source as well. So, balsamoriza sagittata, or balsam root. This is a penstemon, uh, penstemon humilis, and uh, that means lowly penstemon, because if you've seen other penstemons, they have much bigger blossoms, uh, a little more showy. But this is a, a common one here in the high desert. Beautiful little purple blossom and narrow leaves, that's the name, threadleaf phacelia. And the other phacelias that we see here are not nearly as pretty. This is an origeron, uh, a daisy. It's, a, it's actually a, a desert yellow fleabane, and uh, sometimes also called thread leaf daisy because, again, the leaves are very narrow. And this is just a beautiful addition to the scope of yellow wildflowers here in Central Oregon. This is a desert paintbrush, uh, often called harsh desert paintbrush, maybe because they have to live in this harsh climate. <laughs> but um, Castilea, Castilea hispida. It's flax, and so I think they did use a harvest and use it kind of like a basket weaving linen type thing, the Native American. They used everything. Maybe a little better one. This again is a, a common lupin in the high desert. Um, lupin is Arabus, so basically meaning uh, in a in an arid climate, in a in a hotter climate. These are the ones we see. The leaves are what they consider palmate, so they kind of look like they would fit in the palm of your hand, a little smaller. And notice how they're tilted up. Um, that allows them, when it does rain, to collect that water and sort of direct it toward the center of the plant. This is like a dwarf. Well, um, monkey flower. The Latin name is Mimulus 
Nana. Mimulus is the, it's the monkey flower genus. And then um, Nana being small, meaning small. But they're so beautiful. The flower is so beautiful. And sometimes you can see another, an area that's just covered with them. So this is a Clarkia. Uh, we have actually three different kinds of Clarkia that grow in our area here in our high desert. This one is slender Clarkia or um, Clarkia gracilis. Gracilis meaning graceful. And it is a sweet little flower, not very high, uh, about four inches maybe. Some of them only two or three inches. But the, the bloom is brilliant. This is another Townsendia, Townsendia florifera, also called showy Townsendia. Uh, it, again, in the very large aster family. Here we have the sage brush, and uh, it's got a number of different galls on it. And my understanding of the gall is that an insect comes and it causes a little injury to the plant, and so the plant exudes these uh, fluids that actually enclose the insect. And so it is a protective mechanism. And so sometimes, if you look inside, you can see the little insect. I'm not seeing one in this one. So. And notice how there's a little areogonum, a little desert buckwheat here in the middle of the plant in the middle of the sagebrush where it's found a little bit of shade from the harsh sun and uh, probably a little more moisture that uh, comes down from the plant. I think most everybody knows yarrow and uh, Latin name Achilles millifolium. The, um, lots of stories, and this it has been used as medicine by the Native Americans. Um, this is common name, spreading stick seed. It's Hachelia diffusa, and it is, we, we usually see it along here on the preserve, along the rocks, maybe where it's a little protected from the wind because it has a, a pretty thin uh, stem, but also if you touch it, you will know why it's called stick seed, because it is sticky. It has hairs that um, protrude along the stem. A round leaf alum root, and uh, Huchera cylindrica is the Latin name. And they do tend to grow on uh, rock ledges. I think it draws the uh, moisture out of the cracks in the rock and yet and gets a lot of sunshine and has no competition there. So that's where they like to hang out.